What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the features contained inside of the newest version of Lumion, Lumion 2024. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can check out all of the release notes for the newest version of Lumion um, by visiting their release notes blog post, which I will link to in the notes down below. But let's jump over into Lumion and take a look at some of the new features. And so one of the biggest updates, in my opinion, in this new version is the fact that we now have a real-time ray traced preview, assuming your graphics card supports ray tracing. More on that in a second. But when you add the ray tracing effect to your scenes now, notice how when you move around inside of your scene, you now have a real-time update of what that um, rendered light is going to look like. Um, so, and then once, once you kind of place things, then you can click in the scene in order to do a higher quality render. But notice how things like the lighting are now updating in real time using the ray tracing. So um, you can use this in order to preview your scenes very quickly. And then once you click, it's going to do a more detailed render of the scene so you can see inside of the space even better. And so note that to use any of the ray tracing functionality, you're going to need to have a graphics card that supports that technology. So they have a list of that in their graphics card note for Lumion 2024 inside of their knowledge base. Um, but basically, you're going to need something that has either the GeForce RTX or the Radeon ray tracing. And there's a list of these different GPUs in here um, so that you can figure out if your graphics card is going to line up or not. And so I think one of the more frustrating things with the 2023 version was the vegetation didn't really work with the ray tracing effect. So you had this new ray tracing, but it wasn't really optimized or working very well with the actual vegetation. They've gone through and they've now upgraded their nature models so that they're ray traced, which means you're gonna get much more realistic results. And so you can kind of scroll down and see what some of that might look like in their release notes right here. Um, but they've upgraded those and they've also added a hundred new fine detail um, trees and plants. Those are the trees and plants that are optimized for the close up views. But as you can see, they look a lot better, um, especially when using that ray tracing. So you can kind of see some of the translucency and things like that. It's not really letting me pause these, but if you look at this, you can see how the light is kind of like, uh, the light is interacting with these plants in a more realistic way. I guess this is probably a good place to look at it, but you can kind of see the different colors and things like that. But they've upgraded their nature library so that it's going to work with that ray tracing now, which is very exciting. All right, and so you might have noticed that in previous versions, the glass with the real-time ray tracing didn't work um, quite right. So um, it wasn't quite giving us the results that we wanted. Well, now within the ray tracing feature right here, so if you go into the ray tracing effect, notice how there's an option here for fully ray traced glass. And so if you check this box for ray traced glass, notice how now the glass is actually going to interact in a realistic way. So you can see how, um, and, and this is still in the real time version, so you're definitely getting some fireflies in here. But um, if you click to preview, notice how now you're getting that realistic glass and the light's actually interacting with it the way that it should. So um, you can use this in order to render more realistic glass inside of your scenes than what we had access to previously. So you can see how this is the old, this is the new and it looks a lot better. And so note that to kind of complement this inside of the material editor. So if you select a glass material and you scroll down, there's an option that's going to adjust the emulated thickness of the glass in the object. So um, this is going to adjust how thick the glass is and that's going to adjust the effect that you get inside of the real time ray tracing. So you can play around with that emulated thickness in order to get different results as well. Now note that there are some things about working with the ray trace glass, which you can access just by by clicking on this button right here. And so one thing they note in here is when you're dealing with your flat planar surfaces and big windows and things like that, they don't necessarily recommend that you use the fully ray traced glass. The fully ray traced glass is more designed for these like complex things, right? Like the glass right here, other things like that. Um, but they've got a couple different recommendations of when you might use the um, standard ray traced versus fully ray traced. Um, so you might just wanna read through this really quick. So there are a few things like decals, the ocean water, things like that, that aren't really supporting this fully ray traced feature right now, but um, it's definitely a huge improvement over what we had before. So make sure you read this, but very excited to see fully ray traced glass inside of our renderings in Lumion.
And so in addition, they've gone through and they've upgraded their render speed for ray traced videos. So they're reporting that's gonna be um, over five times faster. I can't really test that because I've also upgraded my computer in that time. So um, I can't tell you apples to apples what it was before and what it was now. I can tell you going through and rendering out a video was pretty fast um, on my computer. So um, any performance improvement there is always appreciated. Um, like I said, they're reporting five times faster. Um, it does feel faster to me, but I don't have a good frame of reference. So another change that's going to affect everyone is notice how now um, your menu bar is on the left hand side of your screen. So it used to be over here in the lower right hand corner and it took up some screen real estate over here, but now that menu bar is gonna be over here on the left hand side. So you can access your photo, movie, and panorama modes as well as build mode. And you can also go back home and do a save or a save as over here on the left hand side as well. And so in addition, they've now added 25 new parallax interiors. So parallax interiors are basically two-dimensional effects, which you can find by going into place mode right here under effects. And then you wanna click on this button. That's gonna give you access to these parallax interiors. But basically what these are is these are interiors that are two-dimensional like this. So what you do is you place them and then you move them so that they're behind your window but notice how they give the illusion of depth, even though it's a two dimensional image like this. So you can see if I look through this window, for example, I can't see that anymore, but over here I can, but you can use this in order to add detail to the inside of your buildings without having to actually come in here and make adjustments, right? And I can make this bigger or smaller like this, but this is a fast, easy way to add detail inside of your scenes without having to add geometry. And there's a number of them in here. So for example, I've got these kind of like longer rooms, longer retail spaces, things like that. And so you can see how using this to add detail is really easy. All right, so next up, we've got a great new feature when adding landscape materials to an imported mesh. So for example, I've created a 3D surface right here in SketchUp. Well, if I go into my material editor and I apply any kind of material to this, so say I went with this Evermotion Roots material right here. So we're gonna pick that Evermotion Roots. Notice how we get this really bad tiling, right? You can see how the tiles are just kind of continuous in here. And previously what you could do is you could kind of come in here and adjust the size and mess with it and then cover it up. But now there's a new feature for materials where if you scroll down, notice how there's an option for enable landscape tiling. If I click on enable landscape tiling, what that's gonna do is that's gonna basically kind of rotate parts and pieces of the texture right here so that you don't get that tiling anymore. So now this ground looks really good where before it just looked like weird rows of soil. So this is definitely a welcome improvement if you're adding landscape materials to imported meshes. And so they've also added a number of new static characters in here as well. So um, you've got a number of these different characters that you can add in here. If you wanna see all of the new characters, you can find those by going into the 3D static. And so if you just kind of scroll through, you can find some with the blue dot, but if you click on the ones with the blue dot and then you click on this L24, it's gonna search for everything that's Lumion 2024. And you can actually do that with anything in here. So you could actually just type in L24 with brackets like this, and it's gonna show you new things that have been added to the library. And actually they've added a number of new things to their library, including the 100 new fine detail nature items, um, additional brick materials, new static interiors, the parallax interiors, and more surface decals. So they've added multiple different things within their library for this new version. That brings their overall asset count to um, just under 9,500. And again, I mean, Lumion probably has one of the deepest libraries of models that I've seen. So it's definitely a strength of this particular program. And so they've got a number of new workflow improvements as well. We already talked about the vertical sidebar, but there's things like adjusting your camera controls. So you can set your navigation to be like the program that you use for 3D modeling. You've got back importing to import multiple different models, as well as GLTF file compatibility if you're working with any of those files, grid overlays for setting up your camera um, using different grids, and a new example project, and multiple new preset styles as well. 
So overall, I really like this update. Um, I especially like what they're doing with the ray tracing. I think there were some things that maybe weren't shipped with the older version that are now shipped with this version that make this much more powerful. Really like the direction they've gone with this update, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.